Hey folks, Vic here for ThePracticalPrepper.com. Welcome back to another video. Last year, I, uh, 2013, I got my ham license. So I'm an amateur or technical class at this point. And uh, working on my general uh, now, so I'll have that put together. Uh, one of the things I think we inherently we have to do as preppers is we have to be able to communicate, uh, gather information, and uh, help other people. Uh, part of that goes to ham communications and uh, I think CB communications in the event of an emergency will also come into play. So my plan had been from the very beginning I wanted to be able to be mobile. I wanted to be able to take my radio setup with some um, portable antennas and move to a particular site and set up and start transmitting. So along those lines I have come across uh, KG7 or K7AGE. K7AGE. He did a video using the Gator Box, and my plan was to continue in that same vein. So, what I've done is I've picked up um, a Gator Box, uh, the one that you see in front of me here. It's, uh, it's nice, it has handles on both sides. It also has a set of feet right here so that if you're just carrying it along you can kind of set it set it on that it also has feet on the bottom so when you set it on a table it's not going to scoot around on you so my plan with this was to basically put all of my radio equipment in this box mount it solid to the box so it won't slide around uh, using a variety of, of radio equipment up the uh, HF rig that I want to use and I got it specifically with the intent of it being portable and smaller than, say, a full-size um, a full-size desk unit that you might have in your office next to your computer or in your ham shack. I wanted something a little smaller. I wanted it a little more portable um, so that it would have some some mounts to where you could bolt it down inside the case. So I got that. I pretty much set myself at 100 watts. I think that was plenty. For what I intend to do with this. If I intend to build something bigger, I'll buy a different radio. So we have these shelf units that we're going to use, just like this one, and I have two or three of them. And beyond that, I'm going to put down a mat. This is the same kind of mat, actually, it's the it's exact mat that you get if you were putting in your toolbox so your tools didn't slide around inside. It's the same stuff. It's, it's, it's really nice. I think it's going to add a little bit of cushion and help everything from kind of moving and help, help, uh, help out. I haven't seen anyone use this. Um, well, let me pull this out of the way. So my main HF is going to be this Kenwood. And as you see, it has, a, it has its own remote head which I'll mount down at the front. This is mounted remotely. So with this up front, this is the driver for all the units. You can do anything and everything that you want right here. And this unit, like I say, the reason I bought it is it's designed with feet, so I can actually bolt this down. It has a 20 tower set up. It has uh, all its power on the back side. Mic, this panel connection is on the front. You have a paddle. Uh, and a key that you can put in here. And then this is your comm link right here on this one. Right here. So I can I can set this into my laptop and from my laptop I can actually do some of the do all the programming for this. Uh, I can also do packet and I can send packet information which uh, is becoming more and more useful in uh, emergency response and emergency communications. So I'm kind of building that into the unit. The uh, power supply <clears throat> will be this DM330 by Alinko. It's very good. It's got a meter. Also has some quick power outs if you just need to tie something on. 12 volt plug in if you want to run that over with a USB and charge your phone while you're at it. You can. Um, and it's got uh, it's got a meter. It tells you volts and amps, so it can tell you what what your voltage is, tell you what your draw is. Really important to know especially if you're running on a battery, figure out how many amp, amp hours you have in the battery and how many amp hours you're using. So that'll be the power. 
So that gives me HF. So what I've got is, uh, this is the Kenwood TMV71A. And then this is the kit, which uh, is an RCD710, which makes this unit, basically this front comes off, this goes on the back, and now it makes it uh, a D710. And um, the main difference in that is you can do pack it. So this thing will also be able to pack it on two meter, 70 centimeter, and I'll be able to do pack it on DF, so, or HF. Um, so, this is the same radio with this head that I have in my truck and I run all the time, and um, I really do like the radio. So then a couple other things we're adding, and uh, you know, West Mountain Radio has so much neat stuff that you just have to put it in. This is their PowerGate PG40S. It's a 40 amp power supply and it takes your, it takes, this is the input for your power supply. This goes out to your fuse board and this comes from your battery and it has two fuses. Basically what it will do is being in a unit, if I'm hooked to AC power and I have a battery on standby next to it clipped in, this will actually charge the battery for me. Um, not a ton, but this will add up quite a bit of, it'll be charging back while I'm, while I'm just idle. So from this, then we go to the Rig Runner 4008, which, 4008 because it has eight places. Um, this will run, this is incoming. So this is going to run my radios. I will have three radios in this. Um, I have five more spots that I can fill. But all this is lower amp. This runs an amp up to 10 amps and your radios you can plug up to 25 amps in. So um, anyway, that, that'll disperse that. So the other thing I'm going to put in is I'm going to use uh, this Kenwood speaker. I happened to pick one up to put it in my truck because I wanted to. The radio is mounted in a spot, but I want the speaker remotely. And uh, this is a really good speaker. I do, I, I do like them. Um, I think the sound's pretty darn good. And um, they were pretty reasonable as far as pricing went. So I'm going to put one of those in, possibly two. Um, the third radio that's going to go in, and this is where a lot of the ham guys are not doing, and that's, I'm putting CB in as well. This will be upper and lower sideband. And uh, this particular one I got, it's a Cobra 148 GTL. And uh, these are really nice units. But what this gives us in an emergency, especially as a, as a prepper, it's common, it's very cheap to do. You know, it used to be 20 years ago, this was the standard. Everybody had a CB radio. Uh, not so much anymore, but still, all your truckers run CB. So, and they're the food chain. They're bringing in the tools, the equipment, the food, all the other things that you need. So it's nice to be able to get information and talk to truckers. Uh, other people on ranches will just run CBs to communicate between themselves or in remote areas. We live in the rural area north of Reno, so um, this is another tool in the shed that helps you gather information. So I say why not put CB in if you have the room. So uh, we're going to see how all this works out. It's going to be a tight fit. I've got to kind of go piece by piece, but I'll add a little bit of video showing this, how this gets assembled and when this section's put in and kind of keep moving through it. But uh, Hopefully it uh, makes sense to you when we're done, and, and I think it's going to be I think it's going to be an excellent tool. Okay, I figured I'd better stop right here. I uh, pretty much been bolting in and, and laying out components, and uh, kind of show you where I'm at at the moment. I haven't started wiring yet. Let me kind of show you where where we've ended up at the moment, and uh, just zoom in here a little bit. And we started with the power supply. This is the Alinco DM330. This is the uh, this is the HF rig. And both of my Kenwoods here and the Kenwood in the truck all have the control heads. So these just snap out and plug in. It's uh, really simple, real convenient. And uh, the actual radio sits behind it. And then what I did was I hung two speakers. One's right back behind here. This speaker is for this HF. And this speaker over here is for this radio. I didn't put, a, I didn't put anything in for the CB. Uh, I figured I'll just use its speaker as is, since this will get less use than the other radios. Um, but I may change that, I may add a speaker. I can always do, 
do something, move some things around. These speakers, by the way, these are Kenwoods. These are really nice little speakers for the money. They're like 50 bucks. Um, really help sound. They've really helped the sound in the truck on the mobile. And uh, then up above here, this is my, uh, this will be my DX710. This is uh, 2 meter, 70 centimeter. So moving around to the back, kind of show you what's here. So this is, this is the 4008. So this has all, this has eight fuse ports. So this is the power gate. Uh, the power supply, which is right here, so the power will come from this power supply into the power gate first. Then from the power gate, it'll run back up to this end of the 4008, and that will power the strip. The other terminal that's on the power gate, it's this one right here, is can go directly to a battery. So if you had a little battery here, you could run it over here. Let's see, um, of course, the HF radio, and um, this is the back of the CB. This is the back of the 2 meter 70 centimeter. So this is the back of the DX710. Anyway, we'll come back when we get the wiring in and then I'll show you how we wrap this puppy up. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, we're back with you now. I've uh, moved the camera around to a different position. So let me move in here a little bit so that you can see. I'm just going to move in a little tighter. There we go. Okay, so let me show you a couple components. This right here is the power gate. So this actually has an input that is power supply, a regulated power supply, which is up front, our uh, Lenko. This is output, which goes to the Rig Runner 4008, which powers all my devices. And uh, has fuses, and it's using all the Anderson power poles. This particular set right here is going to be plugged into a, I have a set of leads that's 10 feet long. Plug it in here, connect it to a battery right next to it, and now you have battery power if you don't have 110. So the rig runner's here, so we've got the output from the Elenco that goes in from the power gate, runs back over to the rig runner, and the rig runner goes out to each radio. So the HF is powered over here. So this is the HF power. The uh, CB is right on this side, and the 2 meter 70 centimeters on this side. So it all worked out pretty darn well. Just to show you that little shelf that goes in there, that's this one right here, and this shelf just fits right in. So that there we go. So this cord sits on top. This bag sits on top, and um, this can be taken out if you want to service it. And then you've got plenty of room to get to everything. So what I'll do real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the power supply. Now let me rotate everything around. So there's my microphone, I can set that aside. So from this, this is our power supply. So if I turn the power on, power comes up. The CB radio I had on, so it's, it's on right at the moment. And uh, that'll shut it off. So the power's up, gives me voltage. And I can fine tune the voltage right here. So two Kenwood speakers. This Kenwood speaker runs, goes to the, with this radio. The speaker back here above the HF goes with this radio. So it's pretty simple at this point. That's the 2 meter 70 centimeter. And this is the HF. Now, I don't have antennas on anything, so we're not going to hear anything at the moment. Looks like one amp. So it's got one amp, just everything sitting here. I'll turn the CB on. It barely moved. It's still at about one amp. So that's one amp a draw as they're sitting and not doing anything. They're idle. Go back to voltage, she comes right on up, and that's uh, that's definitely 12, it looks more like 13 volts. And what's interesting is I can tune this down, and you hear that warning tone? That was an under voltage. And that came, see if we can, see if I can show that to you. So it probably came from the rig runner right here. So let me zoom in. About as tight as we can get right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the voltage a little bit. There it is. That's an under voltage light. And things like that are going to tell me when there's a problem. I'll get, a, I'll get an audible before I hear this thing go, uh-oh, it dropped out. So 
that's my mobile base uh, go box I guess you could call it for uh, ham radio uh, I also have a bag that has a lot of other handheld and some other things to, to go along with it but pretty happy with this project but we'll show you a little bit when we get it on the air and uh, and uh, hope you uh, think about doing a project like this okay we're inside now and I've got the uh, the new radio the new radio station set up and I just kind of walk you through a little bit what we got so this is the power supply which is now on. So we got a couple minutes to the uh, Northern Nevada Group PrepperNet, which we run every Wednesday night. Uh, got everything set up. I'll just show you. So here's the the CB radio set up, and then here's my HF, which is also set up as well. Don't have antennas for these yet. Just got this set up today, but I'll work on the antennas next and uh, get them operational. So we're just getting started with the net tonight, but I thought I'd show you the, the final product. Um, we set up here in the shack, and we're going to go and we are on the air. So until next time, take care.